So it's been a week since our last Q&A and we've got more questions. So thank you for asking questions because it means we can do another one of these because we both quite enjoy sitting here having a cup of tea and a natter. So yeah, yep. thank you. <laughs> Talking to the internet. Yay, internet. So the first question is about lentils. Uh, it says, you mentioned lentils. I only use it to make dull. Uh, what kind of things do you make with lentils? Now, your mum really likes lentils as well, doesn't she? Yes. Your mum's vegetarian. Yes. And we have lentils with her more than we tend to have at home. Yep. But she does some really nice things where, um, what was the last time? She just kind of has like poi lentils, French yeah. lentils. And they were just um, cooked and just let, they didn't even have anything in them, did no. they? No. It was just like a bowl of them on the table along with like some roasted veg and stuff. And it's like, oh, cool. Just pile them. I think she might have put olive oil in them, but other That's than that, they were just kind of cooked on their own. I quite like that. Funnily enough, um, when you mentioned this question, you know, it was that what do you use lentils for? And he's like, oh, I've got this great answer. I make something with lentils. And then you read it and you said, other than dal, and it was that. Because it is, there's, there's dal, there's also lentil soup, which is kind of a big thing up here. Yeah. Because we're in Scotland, so you do get a lot of lentil soups, which I'm cool with, but yeah. it's, kind of, it's kind of played out a little bit because yeah. you get lentil soup quite a lot. Um, there was also, this is something that we had in a place called the Rose Cafe, Rosebud? Roseleaf. Roseleaf. It sounds like Rosebud does not sound right. Roseleaf. Yeah. Um, and it was cooked, again, like green French lentils with spinach on the bottom, um, feta and roasted beetroot. Do you remember that? Yeah. And we tend to make it with um, smoked tofu instead. Yeah. So it's just lentils cooked, just plain, and then a little bit of balsamic vinegar on them, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. Yeah. And then um, they had like cooked spinach on the bottom. I quite like doing it with the raw. Yeah. So raw spinach on the bottom, lentils, your cooked beetroot, and then your smoked tofu on top. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gigi. Sorry, someone's just off camera. Uh, but yeah, no, that was really nice. Uh, and obviously I prefer your version because it's tofu not feta uh, mm. but I thought that the raw work did work better because obviously mm. um, cooked spinach just so yeah and plus it gets kind of stringy yeah yeah nice in something yeah. but as a base for something yeah yeah not so much uh, we also had a friend of ours made um, spaghetti bolognese using lentils and cinnamons remember Mitch made that when we were in Sky oh right yeah that was really nice there you so go. there's quite a lot you can do with lentils. I feel that we should like experiment with lentils a little bit more. So next week experiments. Be in lentil lent week. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. it was like, experiments in lentils. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a few things you can do with lentils, and um, we'll get back to you. With we. The... I I feel I need to eat more lentils, so. Get back to you with more. Yeah, I think we should do some lentil videos next week because okay. yeah. lentils. I'm cool with that. <clears throat> so, what else we got? Question two is, can you bring a pen, an ear picker and a spoon onto an aeroplane? Aren't they categorised as dangerous, like things like a knife and a fork? Um, this is like a several part question, so we'll deal with that first of all. Um, obviously, we can only answer this in our own personal experience of going mm. through airports. Sometimes you will get a security person who is a total job's worth and is just awkward for the sheer hell of it. Yep. But normally ear pickers are absolutely fine. Let me go get my ear picker so you know what I'm talking about. So this is my, obviously I'm showing you this black on black on black figure. So this is my ear picker. Mine is kind of rubbery, so it's fine. But I've never had any problems taking this on a plane. I can kind of see because it is kind of like pokey, but this has been absolutely fine. Uh, the other question was a spoon, wasn't it? Yep. We've never had problems with a spoon. We take... Let me pop this away. We take these kind of sets with us when we go travelling, and in this it has a straw set of chopsticks a kind of dumpy fork and a spoon and these we've never had trouble with like we've never taken a knife because knives you, yeah. you you won't get it through even no matter how blunt it is you won't get it through 
Um, forks, as long as you kind of go for like the kind of sporky, not too pointy ones, they seem to be fine. Spoons, they're absolutely fine with because you can't really do much damage with a spoon. Um, again, chopsticks, I thought they might have a problem with because again, they're kind of pointy, but no. They, only... We've never had a problem taking cutlery through, like we've never had cutlery taken off of us when I say we've never had a problem. Yeah. You briefly had a problem with one of these sets. Yeah, but I think that was more just because they saw this shape with that bit poking out mm. and like, this is a knife, it's got a, that, this is part of a handle or something. Yeah, it was more like when it's like all packaged up like this and it goes through an x-ray machine, what the hell is it? Yeah. And you've got stops, they've opened it up and gone, oh, it's a straw, cool, yeah, there you go, off you pop. And you didn't yeah. really have a problem with it. So yeah. we've never had an ear pick or a spoon or cutlery, other than a knife, don't ever take a knife, um, taken off of us. Yeah. It's been absolutely fine. So there is that. There is another part to the question. Um, if I bring my iPad and wallet, do you have to put that in the box for the security check? We, well, I suppose I have. We never really travel with things like iPads because it's another thing to kind of keep track of. But when I have, um, yeah, you do need to keep your iPod separate or iPod, iPad um, and laptops do need to be put in a separate tray. But they do let you know this at the airport. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you just take it out and put it in a separate tray. Your wallet, I just tend to keep mine in my bag because until you've gone through security and you're kind of like taking things out your pockets and things are going everywhere, yeah. I don't want to lose it. So my wallet stays firmly in my bag because otherwise I'll just lose track of it. Yeah. But it doesn't need to go into a separate um, tray or anything. Nope. Um, and the last part of this is I also wonder if the charger has to be put in the box too or if I can just put it in my bag and go through the scanning process. Again, they never really mention chargers. They tend mm. to be like, you need to put your laptop separate. They don't really talk about the chargers. So as far as I'm aware, you can just keep that in your bag, but they will let you know at the airport if they need something separate. And even if they do need to like pop it through again, it's not really the end of the world. It won't, they won't mm. get it taken off of you or anything like that. Yeah, I've got one of the sort of battery pack yeah. things and I've never had an issue with that at all. Mm. The only thing which I ever have had an issue with which kind of gets back to the cutlery, mm. is this, uh, which I completely forgot was in my bag. Mm. And customs thought it was like, Ugh, it's a knife, but it's not a knife. It's a beard comb. Yeah. Uh, which you got me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I completely forgot which about it. Which they were a bit funny about. They they didn't really want you to keep it, but mm. which I can kind of see because it looks like a butterfly knife, but yeah. at the same time it is not a comb. But they let you keep it anyway, yeah. so... And they don't tend they don't tend to be too bad in security i have heard some horror stories but luckily we've never really been no. that bad with them trying to take things off of us for no kind of valid reason yeah. i've never had anything taken off of me so yeah yeah there you go yeah but again that is our experience of going through airports with things i get other people are going to have different experiences and totally. yeah it all depends on the <clears throat> airport really the person exactly um okay this one is who are your favorite youtubers and why this is a hard one because <laughs> we don't have a tv license yep. because it's crap so we it is though it's <laughs> rubbish yeah. why are we paying for this because this is all a load of crap so we don't have a tv license we don't watch terrestrial tv we don't have sky we don't have freeview we don't have any of that rubbish we say rubbish. <laughs> we watch Netflix, which isn't rubbish, yeah. yeah. We have Netflix and we have YouTube and we also watch NHK World uh, through the internet browser on the Xbox, which is the Japanese TV, for anyone who's wondering. And we do watch a lot of YouTube because yep. that is our TV. Um, mm. So, yeah, who is your favourite? Well, there's a lot which we watch together. Mm -hmm. So the ones which I watch isn't actually that many um basically it's uh, honest trailers honest game trailers because it's funny um if i need to explain that then i'm i'm not going to <laughs> it's as simple as that um so yeah that's a new retro wave uh which is uh funnily enough a retro wave um station and I found out about Dance with the Dead mm. um, through them 
Who we went to go and see in Berlin because they happened to be playing Berlin when we were there, so that was pretty cool. And they are really good live, so yeah, that was a good. That was a YouTube find. Yep, um, and there's one other one which I can't remember for the life of me. What do they do? I have no idea. There was. <laughs> so you, you have no idea what they do, and you don't know who they are. You know, I'm, is this my a mind... video you actually watched? Or? <laughs> my mind is just a complete blank on that one it was like, yeah there was like three or four that I'd thought of beforehand and now I've just remembered those two and that's Fair enough. it well my favorite ones I really like peaceful cuisine because I'm trying to learn Japanese and it's in Japanese so that really helps and also the, the videos are really calming and soothing and I like it for multiple reasons because um, all the recipes make smaller batches so all kind of like American and British uh, recipes make like six to eight portions which for two people is like a way too much whereas his videos make kind of like four portions which is brilliant for two people so um, he makes a wide range of things and yeah I just love his videos full stop um, the other one I've really been enjoying is Anarchist Kitchen um, it's, I love the way she just talks rubbish over the videos. Um, I just really like that. And again, it's uh, like small batches of things and it's like a wide range of like stuff. I like the cooking shows. I like yeah, food. we both do. Yeah. Um, Munchies. Munchies and Vice, was that what you were thinking? Yes. yes <laughs> what do they do? I don't know. Munchies and Vice are kind of like in the same thing. It's not all vegan, um, <clears throat> but... Matty Matheson. We both really like Matty Matheson <laughs> yeah. so much because he's awesome. If you've not seen Matty Matheson, you have to go and check him out because yeah. he's brilliant. Which He has a ramen video going up today, so we need to watch that. Um, yeah. He's awesome. Uh, and there's some really cool stuff on there, so uh, Munchies and Vice. Uh, bon Appetit, we watch. Uh, there is Fermenting with Brad, or It's Alive with Brad, yeah. who's the guy who... Um, they like dub what he says. Yeah. Like, you want to add some water? <laughs> like, <laughs> water appears. <laughs> yeah. So we watched that. And the most recent one is Cooking Tree. This is something that came up on the recommendations. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. What is that? And it's a Korean channel. And it's one of those ones where it focuses on the sound of the food. Which is yeah. it's really relaxing and soothing and meditative but yeah sometimes it, you have the kind of squelch you noises <laughs> which are really hilarious so yeah. i think we're watching it for the wrong reasons <laughs> no we're watching it for the wrong reasons and the right reasons because several of the things we've watched it's been that oh that we... amazing because it was like i made you a flan mm. the other day just for, and he did a chocolate one and mm. i'm sort of looking at that and i'm going mm, i don't know if i'd actually want to do mm. a chocolate flan but certainly a uh, given ideas for oh, oh. <laughs> I thought I didn't want to do it make a chocolate flan I have now been corrected <laughs> and it's not going to be the next flan I make but the one after that so yeah um but no I think that there there's a lot of a phrase that you've coined is falling down the YouTube rabbit hole mm. Uh, which results in things like that which also resulted in um finding yuko kinoshita yeah who is like um like she eats ridiculous amounts of food we were at a friend's place and we were watching on his youtube and we completely messed up his recommendations because <laughs> she popped up we we're like i have no idea what this <laughs> is so yeah, yeah shout out to chris and messing up his youtube <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> not sorry at all. But, like, yeah, again, like, it, it's not vegan at all. But, so watching some of the things, she's just like, ha what? How does she... I just... Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's also Gaki no Sukai. Who, it's not a particular channel, but it's like a series of videos. And they're Japanese comedians. And they do things like uh, Kiki, which is where you have like 20 of something. So say it's yakisoba. 20 different types of instant yakisoba. And they blindfold test them and then they have to guess which one it is but they can only pick one at a time so you have to eat it and decide yes or no before you move on to the next one and if you get it right you know you move on to the next one and test that one if you get it wrong you get some sort of punishment which is just normally physical violence it is so... physical violence <laughs> it's like there's like a pachinko machine that like cracks you in the balls or there's like a woman who comes out and like slaps around the head or it's it's hilarious but it's just <laughs> It's and awesome. Whoever it is, 
that massively is... overreacts as well. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, a, massive, a lot of terrible acting. <laughs> massively overreacts, but whoever is dishing out physical violence <laughs> uh, will has also... some sort of Japanese pun to do with what's being eaten. As well. <laughs> I mean, the puns are abysmal. Uh, but if they win, they get like a hundred thousand yen. Yeah. And the producers and there's come out in drag and do a little dance for <laughs> with, as a glamour girl with actual glamour girls, and then you're just like, wait, it's what? Brilliant. They also do um, a series called I've Always Wanted to Try This, absolutely tasty. So say it's pizza, for example, they'll make two pizzas each with toppings that they've always wanted to try. And one of them has an obsession with frisk mints. So it'll be like frisk mint tempura, frisk mint on a pizza, frisk mint custard. <laughs> like, this is just hilarious. So yeah, yeah. if you haven't, you have to check out Gaki yeah. no Sakai as well. So Matty Matheson and Gaki no, because they're brilliant. So yeah, let's move on. <laughs> we'll talk about YouTube channels we love all day. Go on. Well, I was just going to briefly interject the thing that you mentioned with NHK World, mm -hmm. Lunch On. Yes, Lunch On, on a Thursday, it used to be 4.30, it's now 5.30 in the UK, and it's a show about bento lunches and different people's jobs in Japan, and I'm obsessed with that show. Because it's amazing. But it's not YouTube. Yeah. But, but it, it is something you should watch. <laughs> on YouTube. Aha. Yeah, because you can. There's episodes of um, Lunch Run. I forgot about that. Yeah. There's episodes of Lunch Run on YouTube, which you should do with you. Go memory. Yay! I remembered something. But no munchies. <laughs> but no munchies. Or Viceland. Or Matty Madison. Uh, oh, well. Anyway, next question. The last one isn't so much a question. It's just something someone said, and I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit more. Um, it was saying that um, I live on my own so it's only too easy to skip meals um, or just have a piece of fruit um, and this was a comment on one of the meal prep videos now obviously we have not always lived together yep because you know we've we've just hit our third wedding anniversary we've been together seven years so before then I lived on my own and you lived on your own so yep. um, so just something I wanted to kind of cover because when I lived on my own obviously I love cooking that's why I have this channel yep and you don't always want to heat up an entire oven for one thing. And cooking one portion of something isn't particularly easy. No. Um, I didn't have a freezer at the time, so I couldn't really do meal prep. And, yeah, it was just generally a bit of a pain in the ass. So what I did, the way I kind of like dealt with this, was I had a George Foreman grill. So I had like the kind of glass hob top um, and an oven. The oven is used as storage space and I put like a cover over the top and I put my George Foreman on it and I used to cook everything in this thing. I used to get like bread dough and chuck it in there and I'd make like little kind of panini type things or um, panini pizzas. You get like half a pizza, uh. put some extra toppings in it, fold it in half, chuck it in a George Foreman. Uh. It's made me realise how much I miss a George Foreman and how much we need one in our lives again. <laughs> because they're also You can chuck anything in these things and I used to use that to cook everything because... Yeah. It was brilliant. Uh, I think the main reason that we... I also... The reason that we stopped using it... Is because your mum broke it. We lent it to Leo's mum, who then tried to like physically pry it apart to clean it, and it didn't come apart. Oops. So it died. <laughs> the other... <laughs> I'd forgotten that. that. That's what happened, wasn't it? Yeah. The thing which I... I found an absolute peg about cleaning said George Foreman without prizing it apart mm. and killing it. Um, but the thing which I really struggled with mm. was um, obviously not vegan at the time mm. and there was a lot of grease and yeah. whatnot that came out of it. So cleaning it was just not a pleasant experience at all. However, um, going back to favourite YouTubers, Anarchist Kitchen, she uses one, but what she does is put foil in it. So you put the foil on the bottom, put your stuff in, fold it over the top and close it, and it still gives you the grid marks on it, but it kind of keeps everything contained. Especially if you're putting veggies in there, because if you put something like tomatoes in there, they get kind of drippy, and that, that's yeah. when it starts getting horrible. Whereas if you put your foil in there, it keeps it all contained and nice and juicy. That's a really good... So we might have to do that as well, do like one portion cooking videos with a George Foreman because that's what I <laughs> loved doing that. I loved my George Foreman so much. I know I you do. I kind of miss it. <laughs> I know, it's just, it's 
seeing you, your face light up and you we're smile. We're transforming. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I loved that thing. I loved it so much. So, okay, so yeah. we're going to go to argue. But what did what? you do when you were living on your own and oh, you were Jesus. kind of cooking for one? Because when I first met you, you were going through, like, I say a phase, a long phase of living off of soup. And you no. used to go and buy a carton of soup, well, multiple cartons of soup, and that used to be your thing. Yeah. And what I ended up doing for you, like, we went to the supermarket and you got really grumpy. You know, <laughs> They've not got my favourite type of soup. I'm like, what type of soup is that? And it was ham and pea at the time. And I was like, well, I'll just make you some. And what I used to do is I used to come up for a week. Yeah. I would, like, go on this massive soup cooking spree. I would portion it all up into, like, you had these little square Tupperware tub yeah. things at the time. I'd portion them all up into those, label them for you, and I would literally fill your freezer yep. with tubs of soup. And it, again, it's that kind of like meal prep. If you have got access to a freezer, yeah. you can do something like that. But because I used to come up and do it and then go back again, you wouldn't always finish it. So say week one, I made ham and pea, and week two, I made tomato, and week three, I made curried parsnip. By the time you've got to week three, you've still got a little bit of like the other two left, so you can start mixing it up a little bit. The only problem is making sure that, you know, things don't get lost in the freezer. Yeah. But after you've done a couple of weeks of it, you start to get a bit more of a variety. Yeah, interestingly with that, um, I that, like you say, it being a long period, uh, it was like four months or so. Yeah. Uh, one of my colleagues at work mm. uh, commented when I when I actually turned up with proper actual ones to give me his food. Mm. So he said, you're eating. And I was like, Yes, <laughs> and she's like, "But you're not eating. You're not having soup." And he's like, "Yeah." Oh, I thought you had a swallowing problem and you couldn't manage solids because <laughs> all you we had was soup, yeah. porridge, soup, or yogurt, and yeah. that was it. And it was that. Oh, so yeah. Oops. There are benefits to both. There's benefits to meal prepping and putting it in the freezer. Like. Yeah. And there's also, if you've not got access to that, having some sort of kind of device that you can just literally throw everything in and have an entire meal made out of it. So, yeah, yeah, which is kind of why I wanted to cover it. Well, it wasn't a question. It's something I wanted to chat about because we both had very different kind of approaches yeah. to cooking for one. Yeah. So. I think this is one of the things which is the key difference between us is that you enjoy cooking and you hate it a lot more than well uh, you get really stressed out by it yeah uh, that that's yeah. become a that's become a recent thing mm. i find it very calming and meditative and you get stressed out yeah which is why i but, do all of the cooking but also it's that you're you're a much better cook than me a much more inventive cook than i am because i'm very recipe driven mm. and whereas i can't follow a recipe to save my life because yeah, but you, you like that's wrong. That's clearly wrong. I put more of that in. I'm not putting that. In. <laughs> yeah, but you're very so starting point. <laughs> exactly. For you, a recipe is that's your, that's where you start. Mm. Whereas me, I very much follow it. Um, mm. And if I don't have some ingredients, I'll be like, right, well, I can't do that then. Um, mm. And but if I find something that I really want to do, then I really enjoy cooking. Mm. But I just found the cooking for, oh, I've got to have dinner tonight. I just found that monotonous and a chore. Yeah. Um, so I think that we kind of play off. I say we play off each other. I clearly benefit great more than you do. But every so often I will do things like make quick and more. Yeah, flan. exactly. And you'll so. be like, make more. So there we go. By all means, ask us more questions because we quite like making these videos. Um, Thank you very much, yeah. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And I'm sure we'll speak to you another time. Indeed. Say goodbye, Gigi. I'll look to the camera, that'll do. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>